Hi guys, it's Jo here with another video tutorial, this time featuring the Time for Tea Designs Totally Awesome Stamps and Die Set. This stamp set is um, at the moment exclusively available through Create and Craft and I will provide the links to, uh, to those products um, in my description below and on the accompanying blog post. So you can just see here that I'm just stamping out all of my images and um, some really cute images within this set and they're really fun to colour and, and pretty easy to colour as well. I've um, brought out my Zig Clean Colour um, Real Brush markers for this and this is the very first time that I've actually used these. So you can see that there's a little scrap of paper on the left hand side that shows some of my first workings trying to work out the color combinations and how I was going to actually use the pens I've uh, like I said I've not used them before and in the end after a little bit of experimenting I decided that just laying down um, a darker and a mid-tone color and then applying some water using a water brush actually gave me the better effect um, that I that I really liked so um, I'm doing that with um, each of my color combinations at this stage I didn't really have many colors to choose from so I really only had um, the light green and green to work with so again either using those directly onto my image and then blending them out with the brush or as I'm done here on this second image I've applied the marker directly to my acrylic block and then used some of um, the water from my water brush just to dilute that slightly and then applying that onto my image and I actually preferred this version of colouring in the end. It gave me a much more subtle look, um, a nicer blend and it also gave it more of a watercolour effect which, if, which really worked with the particular project that, uh, that I was working on. So I'm just moving through the different um, images and I'm moving on to this um, lily that uh, I've done in the cobalt, uh, sorry, in the pink and the carmine red. Uh, like I say, I, I think I've only probably had maybe 12 colors to, to choose from. So my color palette was limited, but I, I don't think that that um, affected uh, this, the coloring, um, the project at, at all. I think actually these um, images really work because they're, they're small. So a limited color palette really does work. And you can see the final, final images there looked really good. So I'm just moving on now to my background. Uh, I die cut all of the images using um, the coordinating dies and I put them to one side and I'm now working on uh, blending my background using some Distress Oxide inks. The, um, you can see that, that there are actually three um, colours that I'd, I'd got out to use but when it came to it I didn't like the third colour so I have just stuck to the two colours the Salty Ocean and Twisted Citron because once I would blend um, the Salty Ocean across the bottom half of the page it made a really nice uh, green colour when it was mixed with the Twisted Citron so I really really liked how that looked in the end and I didn't feel it needed a third blue um, as well once I've gone over all of my uh, page once I go back over each of the colors again to get a really smooth blend and this deepens the color as well so um, it's actually creating a nice um, a nice blend of colors and a nice um, ombre effect uh, without having to add in any further colors so if you do have limited uh, colors in your distress oxides you can still achieve a really great look even just with a couple of those uh, a couple of key colors um, in your stash so once that's all completed i'm using a, an old toothbrush and just some water to create some splatters onto my um onto my piece there and that just creates a really nice textured effect um, once that's all dry I then moved on to um, laying out um, my pieces so that I could work out where my sentiment would go. So the three um, little Polaroid pictures that you see there will form part of the final uh, picture and I'll show you um, how I've done that a little bit later on. Um, but first of all I'm working on my sentiment just before I add anything any more bulk to the card so that I can get a nice clean impression. I'm using some embossing ink 
to um, stamp my um, my sentiment there. I'm then using some white embossing powder and applying that to the um, the embossing ink and then I'll now use my heat tool just to, to heat that up and um, set that powder in place. And once that once that's completed, um, just clearing up my, my workspace and um, moving everything out of the way there so that I can start assembling the rest of my card. So as I mentioned before, um, I'm using the Lawn Fawn um, Say Cheese uh, Again set. And these are the small, smaller Polaroid um, shaped uh, pieces. Um, I've cut several of them out of just some ordinary plain white card stock. And now I'm layering up three of those uh, pieces together to create some dimension. So just one on top of the other, just using some liquid glue around the outside and then just um, layering those on top of each other. The liquid glue just gives me a little bit of wiggle room so that I can um, make sure that I've got those perfectly lined up. Um, and I'm just adding the last one on there and then that will give me a nice little bit of dimension without having to use any extra foam tape. So now that's complete, I'm taking an A6 um, side, um, well, a top folding <laughs> card blank, but I've put it on its side, so it's landscape. And I'm applying my background to that with some more of that liquid glue and just using a blank piece of paper to make sure that that's fully adhered and I don't get any dirty fingerprints on onto it. And now I'm applying some of my accessories to my frog and the little ladybird to its uh, lily pad leaf. And now I'm just trying to figure out where I want each of my, my little images to be placed within the, the card front. And this leaping uh, frog image will be the uh, center panel. And he's obviously just a bit too big. So I'm just figuring out where he'll be positioned. And then I've chopped off his legs. Um, and uh, and then just adhered the side of him to, to that uh, frame. And now I'm just working out where each of these these little images will go and placing those in line with the frame and I'm, I'm sticking those down first because I want the frames to sit on top and um, as that's where the dimension will be and each of them will be framed but there will be little elements that will be outside of the frame so like with this example i'm going to stick the two elements down at the same time so that the the little toad's arms can stick outside of that frame so a little bit of pressure just to make sure that that's stuck down and then a little bit more um, was needed behind his head just to make sure that he was properly fixed in place so that, that frame um, fits on just nicely there. And then now there's just enough room in the middle for my third frame to sit um, in between those two um, outer ones. And it will need a tiny little bit of extra foam tape. And this is just really thin um, shaker foam tape that I've cut down uh, because this, this little guy will sit proud of his two, his two friends. Um, and it will stand out as the, the focal focal point. So just fitting some little bits, little squares in there and removing the, the backing tape so that we can uh, sit him in the middle of um, our panel. And it's probably worth just mentioning that uh, this video has been quite some time in the making. I have been working on um, getting my video editing um, up to scratch for quite some time so I've had this uh, this footage for quite a while and uh, I've, I'm really excited to finally be able to show it to you and bring it to you so I hope that you do like it and I hope that um, you you like the uh, the videos that uh, we're sharing now uh, there will be more coming in the future as on when we can we can produce them so I'm just adding my elements onto the the bottom of these frames just for an extra little bit of decoration and like I say these little 
images are so um, so easy to work with and they really make uh, an eye-catching uh, card front uh, when they're all applied. Um, the little heart there um, is also being die cut and that's just applied um, below the sentiment again to add that extra little bit of decoration. So now that uh, it's just about adding some finishing touches, so I'm using my Wink of Stella pen here just to add a little bit of glitter um, to each of the, the elements. So on the, the bow tie, on the wings of the little dragonfly and on the heart, um, and then using my white jelly roll pen to add a little bit of um, highlight to each of my um, images there. Um, I'm using the slightly larger one, which is what I replaced um, because the first pen that I used didn't really make an impression. And I'm now trying to add some some gloss to um, to the heart. My glossy accent was uh, was clogged up, so I moved on to use um, my Nouveau um, glitter. Uh, well, this is the, just the clear crystal drops. Um, and I'm applying that to the heart and then to the uh, wings of the dragonfly to add some more um, some more dimension and gloss there. I just think that looks really nice once it's dried um, and just adds that, that finishing touch. Um, and once I'd started, I couldn't stop. So a few extra drops on the, on the lily there just finished the card off um, nicely. So like I say, I really hope that you like the, uh, the video. Um, if you do, then it'd be great if you could like and subscribe as there will be more videos to come. And there will be details of all the products that I've used in the accompanying blog post. Until the next video, here are some other tutorials that you might be interested in watching. Thanks ever so much. Bye bye now.